Hello, this is Chris Jewett from Extreme Flight RC. Welcome to Build Video 2. Today we are going to start working on the fuselage. Step one will be to remove the canopy. Reason being is as we heat up the covering with the covering iron or the heat gun, we do not want to be melting the canopy plastic. Take your iron, go over all the seams on the airframe, and take your heat gun and shrink up any loose covering that might exist. Then we're going to take some tape and tape off the gear block and fuel proof the plate. I'm going to use thinned out epoxy, which I've thinned out with rubbing alcohol to the point of running water consistency, and you'll just paint it onto the block. I found over time that if you don't seal these, fuel will get under there and make it almost impossible to keep the covering attached around the gear plate. This will glue the covering down to place and make the gear block fuel proof. The front side of the landing gear is flat and the back side is tapered. You will want to put the flat side going forward. You will want to clean up the opening of the gear fairing so it fits nicely over the landing gear leg. Then we will split the supplied tubing in half on one side so that we can use it as a trim piece on the upper end of the landing gear fairing. It just slides over the fiberglass and then we will glue it in place with thin CA. Slide the fairing into position and mark the gear leg where the fairing ends. The reason we're doing this is because we'll want to scuff up the gear leg so that the glue will stick to it and hold the fairing in place without sliding off. We're going to tape off the gear leg so that when we glue on the fairing we don't make a mess and it'll make it easier to clean up. Clean the surface that we're going to be gluing to with rubbing alcohol. For this application I use epoxy. Here I'm mixing up some 5 minute epoxy and putting it on fairly thickly on the gear leg area that we sanded. Then we'll slide up the gear fairing into place where we want it on the fuselage. Let the epoxy soak into the gear leg and clean it up with some paper towels and rubbing alcohol. Set it aside to dry. After the epoxy is fully cured, remove the masking tape. I prefer epoxy for this operation because as you can see you get a very solid fairing. After you have the landing gear and the fairings mounted, the next step is to mount the axles. The hole that comes pre-drilled in the gear is too small for the axles in the kit. Use a quarter inch drill to open that hole up and mount the axles. The order of assembly is axle, washer, lock nut. The main trick to getting the wheels mounted on the axles is to get them centered in the wheel pants so that they do not rub. What I've done here is put on one wheel collar with the Allen wrench attached, then we'll slide on the wheel pan and jack up the wheel until it's right in the center of the opening on the wheel pan. After we've found the center, we will tighten the lower wheel collar. The 
If you're happy with the placement of the wheel on the axle in relationship to the opening of the wheel pant, go ahead and put on the outer collar and tighten it down. Notice here I'm running the set screw in and out to mark a spot on the axle so when I come back in a second I know exactly where to flat spot the axle. Now that you've marked where the set screws go, go back with the cutoff wheel and put a small flat spot where the set screws tighten onto the axle. After flat spotting the axle, put the wheel collars back onto the shafts into the locations with the flat spots and tighten them down with blue Loctite. It's also a good idea to grease the axles with a little Teflon grease. This will keep them rolling nicely over time. In assembling the tailwheel, the first step is to take the whole thing apart and flat spot anywhere that there's a set screw. The piece that I'm flat spotting first here is the tiller arm. It's the part that actually attaches to the rudder and turns the tailwheel. In any case, flat spot every set screw and put it back together with blue Loctite. When reattaching the tiller arm, you're going to want to loosen this lower wheel collar, put it through the tailwheel mounting bracket, and then put the tiller arm on top of it and seat it as far down as you can onto the shaft. Once you've got it as far down on the shaft as you can, mark where you need to flat spot the main tailwheel assembly. When mounting the actual tailwheel, make sure that it is centered right underneath the tiller arm and in the center of the axle.
Another tip here is if you remember to put the set screws facing down on the wheel, they'll be easier to get out if you ever have to take them off while they're on the aircraft. One of the reasons I put the tail wheel on the aircraft before installing the wheel pants is now that we have the natural stance of the airplane, we can figure out where the wheel pants need to be in relationship to the ground. Once you're happy with the alignment of the wheel pant, go ahead and drill out one of the mounting holes for the screws in the wheel pant. Once you've drilled the pilot hole in the wheel pant, you'll need to go ahead and open that hole up to fit the supplied blind nuts that come in the kit. Start by seating the blind nut with your fingers, then take the bolt and a washer and screw it into the blind nut from the outside to pull it into position. After you've pulled it into position, go ahead and hit it with thin CA to secure it. After you've installed the first blind nut, go ahead and put it back on the airplane and verify that the alignment is how you want it and drill the second hole. Once you have drilled the holes and mounted the blind nuts, go ahead and mount the wheel pan to the aircraft using the supplied bolts, washers, and blue Loctite. It's important to make sure that the wheel spins freely and doesn't rub on any part of the wheel pan and that the wheel pan is sitting straight on the airplane and flush against the landing gear leg. It is possible for the wheel pan to bind up on the axle and to not sit properly. In this case it's sitting perfectly straight. The second wheel pan is actually far more difficult to install than the first one because you have to make it align perfectly with the first wheel pan. Use visual cues by looking over the top of the second wheel pan to the first wheel pan that's already mounted make sure that it's perfectly straight. To get the rudder ready for mounting on the airplane, go ahead and clean it up with a heat gun and a covering iron just like we've done before and prepare the hinge slots for mounting. While we are waiting for the rudder hinges and control horn to dry, it's a good time to prepare the fuselage. As usual, we want to hit every single joint that we can with a thin CA. 
The firewall is already fuel proof, but if you go over the covering where it wraps around the firewall, this will keep it from pulling off over time. Do your best to hit every single joint you can with NCA. It will really make the aircraft strong. This is a fuel tank mounting tab that comes in the hardware kit. It installs from the tune pipe tunnel side and will need to be CA'd in place. It basically gives you something to wrap Velcro around to suck the tank down into the aircraft. Because I've already mounted the tailwheel to the fuselage, I need to figure out where on the rudder to drill the hole for the tiller arm ball link. You want to be careful when you're drilling the hole for the tiller arm not to go too deep into the rudder. There are structural ribs just beyond the balsa that the tiller arm mounts to. Now that the rudder is totally complete, let's prepare the fuselage to accept the rudder. First step is to put epoxy into the hinge holes on the fuselage side. Rudder installs just like the elevator and ailerons did, the only difference here is that you have to fish the tiller arm through the ball link on the rudder. If you're happy with the hinge gap, tape the rudder into position and set it aside to dry. Thank you for watching. Please proceed to build video 3.